In 1984, the U.S. Supreme Court issued a decision that would change the course of history at Grove City College. The landmark decision in Grove City College versus Bell impacted generations of faculty, students, and alumni, and continues to serve as an example for other institutions of higher education. Grove City's battle began in 1977, when then college president Charles S. McKenzie refused to sign a form indicating Grove City College would comply with Title IX, the federal law that prohibits discrimination on the basis of sex in any federally funded education program or activity. The government was essentially asking Grove City College to sign a blank check for its own future and its freedom. So this was really much more of a question about whether or not there would really be meaningful independence and um, private enterprise when it came to the issue of higher education. Dr. McKenzie, why is Grove City so opposed to Title IX? Actually, we're really not opposed to Title IX, Judy, in principle, and we're very supportive of the intention of Title IX. But we are very much opposed to signing a compliance form which, in essence, would give the federal government jurisdiction over a private college that accepts not one penny of direct federal funding. If the college didn't comply, the government threatened to withdraw federal funding. Since Grove City College rejected federal assistance as a matter of principle, the threat was seen as hollow until the government identified student grants and loans, which a quarter of the student body relied on as federal aid to the college. The Federal Department of Health, Education, and Welfare ordered all student loans and grants to Grove City College students be terminated. And on November 8, 1978, the college and four students filed a federal lawsuit disputing the validity of the regulation and its impact on student aid. We, we started this case against the most powerful of adversaries, the federal government of the United States. That's what Grove City was founded upon, religious and Christian ideals. And to take those away, Grove City, Grove City wouldn't be the same anymore. We want to preserve not only our independence, our right to remain independent from government, but also any other institution that wants that right. Um, we're not just talking about a secular case here at Grove City College. We're talking about other colleges and other institutions. And so we're not going to sit by and let something go that we don't believe in. The case wound its way through lower federal courts, with the college arguing that grants and loans were aid to students, not the college. Grove City won the first round on June 26, 1980, when federal judge Paul A. Simmons ruled the college didn't have to sign the assurance of compliance, that federal student loans weren't subject to Title IX, and federal grants couldn't be stripped from students unless a college was guilty of violating the law. The federal government appealed this ruling. Yes, we would try to raise the private monies that would be necessary to replace government funding, but we will remain a private, independent, value-oriented school. On August 12, 1982, an appeals court reversed Simmons' ruling and declared that student loans and grants were considered aid to the college that could be withdrawn unless the college agreed to comply with Title IX. The college appealed that ruling to the U.S. Supreme Court which agreed to hear the case in 1983. Attorney David LaSalle argued the case before the nine Supreme Court justices and a gallery that included more than 50 students and supporters of Grove City, all wearing crimson carnations in their lapels. We reminded the court um, again and again that this was not a discrimination case. Remember that, Mr. Justice Marshall. This is a case of principle because how is this college going to survive against the intrusion of the federal government? How in the world are we going to say that there is just a little bureaucracy and that's okay? We said as well to the court, those loans and those Pell Grant funds 
can be used by the student for anything he or she wishes to do, including, your honors, buying beer, shocking as that may appear, at Grove City. But that, in fact, is how little control we have, we the college have, over that money. There is no way that we can control it and therefore we should be free from compliance with Title IX because there is no federal financial assistance. The High Court issued its ruling on the case on February 28, 1984. The decision was definitive, but its impact wasn't fully clear. It's easy today to think that the college won the case, considering how central it has become to campus lore. But the fact is that Grove City College lost on every point that mattered to the college's independence. It wasn't seen as a victory for those who advocated government control of education. Between 1984 and 1988, politicians and lawyers in Washington continued to wrangle with the questions raised by the decision. In 1984, the House of Representatives passed what was known as the Grove City Bill to expand Title IX to every aspect of college life. It died in the Senate, but was revived three years later as the Civil Rights Restoration Act of 1987. In January 1988, the bill was vetoed by President Ronald Reagan, who said, the truth is, this legislation isn't a civil rights bill. The Grove City bill would force court-ordered social engineers into every corner of America's society. I won't cave to the demagoguery of those who cloak a big government power grab in the mantle of civil rights. Congress managed to override Reagan's veto, and the college in 1988 stopped accepting federal Pell Grants replacing that aid with private funds. In 1996, the college withdrew completely from federal student loan programs and established its own system of private loans. Grove City College versus Bell set Grove City College on a new, clearer road to independence. It hasn't been an easy road, but it has led to a unique place in higher education, one that allows the college to maintain its historic commitment to academic independence, the free market, individual liberty, and Christian truth. To thrive over the next decades, this college and its supporters will have to find remarkable amounts of alternative funding, real effort on the part of the college's leaders, real effort on, on the part of people outside this academic community, like so many worthwhile principles, freedom and independence here come with a very high cost. The heart of the American idea is freedom, especially the respect for individual conscience. And the future of our country is dependent on citizens understanding and nurturing that heritage. So at Grove City College, we see our mission as being not only preparing students for vocational fulfillment, but also preparing them to be extraordinary citizens who really appreciate what the American heritage is all about. Um, our independence as an institution goes hand in hand with that mission. To the extent that we understand the importance of freedom and independence, our graduates will go into the community with a special appreciation for those values. Yeah.